What is up? We're going to be talking about the science behind how to train for explosive strength. So everything that's happening in the body that you need to be working on, or that's what's just happening behind the scenes in order to make you more powerful, more explosive. Okay. My name is Nick Lydon. I'm a certified strength and conditioning coach. I am the owner and trainer of the peak performance program and co-owner of athlete Academy. So like, follow and subscribe to our TikTok. Our, our Instagram, all that, you can message me on there. Stay tuned because later videos, I'm gonna get into the exact methods that we use inside of the peak performance programs throughout our different phases to maximize these different components. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is how our body responds to stress and what is stress. So stress is any stimulus that really gets us out of homeostasis. So in terms of training, think your conditioning, your strength training, your power training, agility work, right? Those are all stresses that we're putting on the body. Okay, games, practice, all that stuff. Those are all stresses, but there are other stresses like life, financial, girlfriend, right? All those different things also count as stress, but in terms of this, we're not gonna focus on them because you can handle that on your own, right? So our body needs stress in order to make adaptations, right? So we need to place stresses on our body to tell our body, hey, we need to get stressed stronger. We need to make some adaptations so that we can handle this in the future and likely be better at it. Okay. So we think about this, right. And, but we don't want to go overboard with the stress. We just want enough stress, right? We don't want to, if we had a bucket that we can handle a stress, we don't want to fill it and overflow it on the top. Cause then we get into overtraining our, our, and our central nervous gets out of whack. Our performance drops crazy. Okay. So we want to fill it just up enough, but not enough that we can't actually recover from it. And the next day we can't fill it up a little bit more. Okay. Now, with that being said, there is a principle that everyone should know. Every athlete should know, every bodybuilder should know, every anyone should know who's getting into training and looking for some specific results, okay? There's something called the said principle. So it's specific adaptation to impose demands, okay? And all that means is that our body is going to respond and get better at the specific stresses we place, right? The demands we place on our body to get better at those things, okay? All of these training, those qualities is going to get you to be better at those qualities. So this is where a lot of people make mistakes is that they will go do bodybuilding or I don't know, go for long runs. And then the bodybuilder people are like, what the heck I got slower. Like I got bigger, but I got slower and I'm not, you know, not as explosive as I used to be. Right. Because you were training for this quality of muscle hypertrophy, but the, the speeds and everything else that it takes to be explosive, you weren't training those qualities. So your body didn't adapt to those. It adapted over here, get better at building muscle and building muscle. That was the response it gave you, but it didn't translate over into power, right? Maybe a little bit. Okay. Disclaimer. The said principle doesn't mean that there isn't any overlap. Okay. So if you're training for hypertrophy and doing bodybuilding, you're likely going to notice that you get a little bit stronger along the way. Okay. If you're training for speed, right, you might find that you actually get a little bit more powerful and a little bit stronger. I know this is the case for a lot of our athletes. We increase their speed, we increase their acceleration and they can go in and they can still hit the same squat and deadlift numbers even more sometimes because we've work the qualities kind of behind the scenes that help translate over, which would be more in the tendon stability rate of force development, which we'll all get into. So you have to train for the qualities that you, that you are primarily looking for. So your body can adapt to them. Okay. And within this, there are specific exercise selections that you should be considering. There are specific loads that you should be considering velocities at which the bars you should be uh, considering and how many reps you should be doing for these considerations for across the board for all of your different different training goals. Okay. That being said, how this works together is how we make, right? It's not just one day and then we get better. Okay. We need to have progressive overload. Progressive overload simply means that we're adding a little bit of stress, a little bit of stress, a little bit of stress week to week, month to month to tell our body, I need to inch the needle forward to get better and better and better. So there are a few ways that we can actually have some progressive overload. Okay. So progressive overload can either be done through increasing the intensity. So like how much weight is on the bar, right? The intensity. Okay. It can also be modified by the volume. Okay. So increasing the number of reps you're doing or the number of sets or total volume that you're doing in a workout or a training phase. Okay. It can also be influenced by your frequency. Okay. If you're going from two times a week of training now to four, right? You've doubled the frequency. So you're going to get double the stimulus, which is going to lead to some overload to get you the adaptations to tell your body to grow or to tell your body to get stronger, more powerful or increase its speed. Um, and the last one is think of like density or time. 
okay? So if we have an hour and we're doing five set exercises in that hour and now we add seven, now we're getting more work done in a shorter amount of time to increase the overload the or the stress response on our body, okay? If you're adding in density, I, I would say that's more on like your work capacity and your conditioning that'll help with that area. Um, just as like a little bonus for you, okay? Now, like I mentioned, progressive overload works with every single goal. Muscle hypertrophy, right? Conditioning, definitely your strength, definitely your power, definitely your speed, okay? So when we're talking about strength, strength, there is an overlap, right? But most of the time, when we're talking about purely strength development, it's anywhere from 75 to 80 up to 90, 95%, three to five reps, anywhere from two up to like six and it touches into eight reps so that so that goes back to that crossover that's happening um with if you're training for hypertrophy and strength because there is some overlap it's not just cut and dry black and white okay there is some overlap okay and we're talking about power power is there's very it has to be very intentional you have to give max effort if you're just going through the motions you're not going to get anything out of it because in order to increase power and speed you have to hit 95 percent of your best like stimulus threshold in order to tell your body to make adaptations to be more powerful to increase your rate of force development which we'll get into in a second which will increase the velocity which at your you're moving the bar or moving your body okay again with power anywhere three to five reps one all the way up to like four five six you can even touch a little bit higher it just depends on the load that you're using right say like a hang power clean compared to say like a banded landmine press or something right something that's a little bit faster lighter load you can typically go a little bit higher on the volume without having a significant decrease in your velocity of the movement which will still elicit a power uh, kind of development response for yourself same thing for speed when we're talking about speed right acceleration versus top speed i'll use top speed as an example your body again needs to hit that 95 percent threshold hold a couple times a week if you're not speed deg degrades really quickly especially max velocity um i believe it's between like seven to 14 days maybe like 10 right there in the middle before you start to see it so your body adapts pretty quickly so we need to be doing things like fly sprints 30 yard sprints things like that to hit our top velocity so if you ran if you run 20 miles per hour you only have five percent leeway which would put you at like 19.5 miles per hour. So if you're going below that, you're gonna be getting into more conditioning or technique work, essentially not hitting your, your top speed, okay? So stress response, specific adaptation to pose demands, progressive overload, how we progressive overload with this. Some of the exercise I'll mention right now, Strength should be pretty simple, right? Think of like your squats, your deadlifts, RDLs, bent over rows, bench press, heavy compound movements, okay? Different ranges of motion depending on your sport or if your goal is more like some uh, like full range of motion strength, it just really depends on where you're at with your training. And then power, okay? Power is a big spectrum, anywhere from like 20% all the way up to like 80, 85% of your, your one rep max. What, what matters is how quickly the velocity of the bar is moving, okay? So for some exercises like a trap bar jump shrug or a hang high pull, you're gonna be able to push that threshold up to say 60, 70, 80% of what your one rep max would be say for your 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 trap bar deadlift or or hang power clean okay to maximize that power versus other exercises say like a trap bar jump squat jump or like a weighted uh, plyometric where you're jumping up off to a box you're going to be more down into the 20 30 percent because if you go heavier the velocity decreases too much and when we're talking about power it's force times velocity and we're trying to maximize that component okay so we're trying to maximize the power that we are generating okay so if we can continually get say we have 500 watts of power at one weight and then we can add you know five to ten pounds the next week but keep the velocity the same now we're going to be at 525 550 right and we're just trying to inch that forward okay and you should be playing around in your your power development there's something known as the force velocity curve okay so at the top is maximal strength where we're working this, okay? Because strength, there is a crossover into power. Then there's a little notch below that, which is gonna be your strength speed. So that's gonna be more of those like heavy trap bar shrugs or heavy hang high pulls or clean pulls or snatch pulls, okay? Where the load's a little bit higher. The load's high enough and the velocity's high enough to still give you a great power output but it's a little bit slower. And then right in the middle, that is your like peak power or your, your power, okay? That is, that one's a little bit more 
wide range. Okay, that one's like the 30 to 80% range, just depending on the exercise selection. But think of like your Olympic lifts, maybe like some 50% velocity decrement, sled sprints, uh, and, and various types of jumps. Um, like a broad jump or something of that nature. Then below that, there is something called speed strength, okay? So now the load's a little bit lighter than that, so maybe now you're like 30 to 50%. Your exercise selection is a little bit different, okay? Maybe now it's like a lightly loaded squat jump where it's like 20 to 25% of your one rep max. You're jumping up as high as you can. Maybe there's a little bit of some weighted plyometrics like onto a box, okay? Drop-in box jumps, depth jumps, repeat broad jumps. That's gonna be a little bit more in the speed strength and then we have our max velocity or overspeed training. So this is like sprinting, bounding. Bounding might be a little bit in the speed strength. It just really depends on, on your body and how well you can perform that movement. Okay, this would be like a lightly, uh, like a 10-yard acceleration. Okay, this would also be something uh, that you may have seen where it's like assisted or overspeed. So think of downhill running, right? Or you can think of like the assisted vertical jumps or assisted pogo hops where now at the bottom, since the band is stretched, it's going going to accelerate you a little bit faster. So your velocity is gonna be higher. Your ground contact time is going to be, that's just how long it takes your foot to absorb and then get back to off the ground, okay? So when we're using these things, we're uh, the three main things that we're trying to emphasize with this, one being your amortization phase. So there's three things, three types of muscle contractions, okay? So there's concentric, which is, if these are my muscle fibers, right? they're contracting under tension to cause movement, okay? There's eccentric, that's where there's tension on the body, but the muscles are lengthening, okay? So they're lengthening. And then there's your isometric, there's a brief isometric between eccentric and, or eccentric and concentric, which is known as your amortization phase. So the amortization phase is the time it takes you to go from eccentric to concentric, okay? And we want to minimize that amortization phase because of something that is over here, which is our stretch shortened cycle, okay? And it, what, maybe you've heard it as elastic strength. So in our stretch shortened cycle, right, that's how our body kind of gets free energy and produces free energy from our body to aid in the force production that's generated from our contractile fiber types going through, say, a squat jump or something, right? The, the quads are contracting to aid in that. But if what happens, okay, during that squat jump is that you come down very quickly. So there's a very rapid lengthening of the muscles. They're still under tension due to gravity and your body weight and the load, right? So there's a rapid lengthening. And what that does, that signals muscle spindles. Uh, they're called muscle spindles. They're, they're little fiber that runs into your muscles. They are responsible for detecting rapid, uh, a rapid stretch, okay? And when they determine that rapid stretch, they see it's there, they will tell, they'll send a signal to your brain to be like, we need to contract rapidly. It's one to help keep you kind of safe, but for us, we're kind of manipulating to give us more power, okay? So that signal is gonna kind of subconsciously give our body a instant contraction, okay, to bounce out of it, right? That's how you get that like bounciness to come out of it. And then there's also something called your Golgi tendon organ, which is essentially kind of the same thing, but it's attached to the tendon. So as that muscle contracts, right? Here's the muscle, it contracts. There's the tendon, when this contracts, this lengthens. So when that senses a lengthen and that stretch, it also does kind of the same thing. It inhibits the opposing muscles, right? And it allows movement to happen, okay? So plyometrics, all a lot of power-based training, that's why it needs to be very like quick. It needs to be very intentional because if you go slow into a plyometric or you go slow into a squat jump, you're essentially taking that factor out and you're not training it to provide a better stimulus and to get more force out of it, okay? There are other things you can do to increase this, such as like isometrics and improving tendon stiffness, which will happen through your plyometrics, overcoming isometrics that we have inside of all our programs to help with this as well. Okay, so that is the elastic strength component. You still will get some of this out of various Olympic lifts because there's that quick kind of like in a hinge pattern, right? You get that quick kind of stretch before you go up that quick eccentric to the concentric, but I can't stress it enough, it has to be fast. It can't be slow. You can't go through the motion. If you take this out for anything like pauses or anything, those are not necessarily bad, but what you're doing is you're taking that out and now you're purely relying on the, the, the contractile force of the muscle, how quickly you can send that signal to produce that force. So that can have a benefit for helping you develop some rate of force development. Rate of force development, 
is essentially when we think about our, our, our body, power comes from central nervous system signals to the muscles to contract, okay? So the rate of force development is how powerful of a signal we can send to our body to contract the muscle, at, at like to provide maximal force. And it's also how fast that signal gets down, okay? So we have someone like an elite athlete, they can send a signal super fast, literally milliseconds to their muscles to contract maximally to allow them to jump and dunk a ball. Versus someone else, that signal is gonna be a little bit slower, so it's gonna take them more time to make this happen, and it's not gonna be as big of a stimulus, so not all of their muscle fibers are going to contract, which is gonna leave them without as much power that is being developed, okay? There are a couple ways, again, through training power, you are gonna get a lot of increases in rate of force development, right? Some of the main ways, right, like so heavy strength training, um, getting back to like your box squats, your deadlifts, your RDLs, your bench presses, all that stuff, those will all help increase your rate of force development the one thing that i want you guys to know is that you need to be intentional with how you're lifting right so you have to try to if in bench press example you have to try to accelerate as fast as you can even though the load is heavy and you maybe you are not moving as fast as you're trying to tell your body to eat. you're just trying to increase that threshold right you're trying to accelerate through the entire movement and move it as fast as possible that'll help with your rate of force development and then also on the other end of the spectrum like light movements where it's very fast very quick like central nervous system training um the over speed stuff that is all going to help to teach your muscle to send a signal faster to increase your rate of force development so all of these will play into how you should be training to get that explosive strength to get that power development Okay, all of these have a factor in it. And if you want to learn more about how this all works, how you should be programming this, what the workout should look like, the order, right? Because there are a lot of variabilities. Just make sure to subscribe, like, comment down below. It's specifically, if you have questions, I'll make sure to answer those. In the next video, I'll be diving into more of the best methods to what I've found to actually get all of this to work together in order to make you a better athlete, which we use inside of the Peak Performance Program. So if you're interested in training like this with me and then with all of our athletes, just check out one of the links below. Again, make sure to subscribe and thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next video.